Dear students, today's topic of discussion is CNA stimulants and cognition enhancers. Students, this lecture has been divided into two parts, lecture one and lecture two. In lecture one, we are going to cover the first part that is CNA stimulants. And in lecture two, we will cover the second part that is cognition enhancers. So let us start our lecture with CNS stimulants. So what are CNS stimulants? These are the drugs which will increase your, which will stimulate your CNS. They will stimulate your central nervous system. So there are basically three classes of drugs. They are number one, convulsants, analeptics and psychostimulants. The first class, convulsants, will include the classes of drugs which causes convulsion or they will cause seizures. Examples of such drugs are strychnine, pycrotoxin, bicusulin and pentylene tetrazole. The second class that is analeptics. These are the drugs which will stimulate your respiration. So example of this drug is doxaplam. And third that is psychostimulants. These will be the drugs which will stimulate your psych. So the drugs are amphetamines, methylphenidate, atomoxetine, modafinil and R modafinil, pimolin, cocaine and caffeine. So let us start with our first class that is convulsant. So the, we will see the first class of drugs under this class that is strychnine. Now as you know strychnine is an alkaloid which is obtained from the seeds of strychnus nux vomica. It is a poison, correct? Now it has been labeled as a spinal convulsant. This is because the dose which produces convulsion in spinal animal is same as in the intake animal. So they have coined the term spinal convulsion specifically for strychnine. Now this is a very important point, right? The examiner can ask which is a convulsion which is termed as spinal convulsion. So basically it is a strychnine. Then it acts by blocking the post synaptic inhibition produced by the inhibitory transmitter glycine. So basically strychnine, they inhibit your neurotransmitter in the brain which is glycine. Now remember glycine is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. Then we go for our next subclass that is picrotoxin. Now picrotoxin it is obtained from fish berries of East Indies namely Anamita coccolus. Anamita coccolus. So it is a potent convulsant. So even a small dose will produce a very strong convulsion. Now this convulsion is characterized by clonic, spontaneous and asymmetrical. So this is a special class of uh, anti, I mean uh, convulsant which is a uh, seen with picrotoxin. Then it, it is also coined as medullary stimulant. So here we have a spinal convulsant which is nothing but strychnine. Very easy to remember. As for strychnine, as for spinal. Right? Now the picrotoxin we have a term known as medullary stimulant because it stimulates the medullary part of your nerves. Right? The brain. Then it acts by blocking the presynaptic inhibition mediated through GABA. So here we have picrotoxin it inhibits your GABA neurotransmitter and strychnine it inhibits your glycine neurotransmitter. <clears throat> then in case of your picrotoxin poisoning, the drug which is the first choice, the drug of choice is diazepam. This is because it facilitates GABA energetic transmission. We have seen picrotoxin, they cause inhibition of your GABA, right? So we will use diazepam which will facilitate, which will stimulate your GABA energetic transmission. So th these are some important points that you have to remember. Coming to the third class that is Bicucerin. Now it is a competitive GABA A receptor antagonist. So just like your picrotoxin, it is also a GABA receptor antagonist, specifically GABA A receptor. Now its only use is in case of research. There is no other practical use of this Bicucerin. Then the last class that is pentaline tetrazole, also called as PTZ, Medrazole, Leptazole. Okay, so this acts by direct depolarization of your central neurons. Okay, now this pentaline induced epilepsy, mainly pentaline uh, tetrazole, it is used to induce epilepsy or seizure in lab animals. So this has been used extensively to test the efficacy of your anti-epileptic or anti-convulsion drugs. So uh, a question can be asked that which of the following drugs produces an epilepsy which is widely used to study anti-convulsion property of a drug. So the answer is pentaline tetrazole induced convulsion, right? Then that was our first class, that was the convulsions. The second class is analeptics. Now these are the drugs which will stimulate your respiratory system. So we have only one class that is doxapram, right? 
So it is a particular value for resuscitative in coma and or fainting. Okay, so if we have a patient who is in coma or fainting, whose respiratory is depressed, so that we have a very good drug that is doxapram, which is used to stimulate. Even in the case of coma, it can induce respiration. And the one important point to know is margin of safety is very narrow. So we have to be particularly careful with the dose selection. Okay, slight increase or decrease of the selection will not give you the effect or it may give you a hazardous effect. So the uses of this uh, doxapram is it is used in hypnotic drug poisoning. Hypnotics, as you know, they will cause depression of your respiratory system, right? So this will stimulate the respiratory system. Then in case of suffocation or drowning, if you are if a patient if a person is drowned, right, his respiratory uh, will he will definitely suffer from suffocation. He will not be able to breathe properly, right? So again, doxapram is a very suitable drug for this purpose. And it is also used for apnea in premature infant. Uh, premature infant sometimes they will have difficult in breathing, right? So in such cases, your doxapram they will increase the uh, I mean they will stimulate the respiration. And the fourth use is it is used okay in uh, uh, general anesthetic. So after the general anesthesia has been given, usually it will take some time for uh, ventilation to occur, right? So this particular drug, doxapram, is given so that the ventilation is brought immediately, right? So that was the, the third class of CNS stimulants are psychostimulants. So these are the drugs which will stimulate your psychs. The drugs are amphetamines, methylphenidate, atomoxetine, modafinil, r modafinil. Pimolin, cocaine, and caffeine. Now we have to note very important point here that it is a predominant cortical activity showing. That means it will show a very important activity on the cortical areas of your brain. So the first class that is amphetamines. Now if you remember your adrenergic system, you will remember that amphetamines they are sympathomimetic drugs and they are specifically a central sympathomimetic drugs. That, will, that means they will act on your brain and they will stimulate your sympathetic neurons. That is the adrenergic neurons. So we are having two classes of drugs, dextroamphetamine and methamphetamine. Now these particular drugs, they are having higher central activity than the peripheral activity. So generally these drugs will be preferred for your central stimulating activity. Then we have second class that is methylphenidate. Now it is similar to your amphetamine, both chemically as well as pharmacopologically. Now they both, that is the amphetamine and the methylphenidate, they act primarily on, uh, primarily by releasing noradrenaline and dopamine in your brain. Now these are uh, the neurotransmitters, which uh, basically the sympathomimetic neurotransmitters. Now, these are considered superior, the methylphenidate, they are considered superior to amphetamine for attention deficit hyperkinetic disorder, ADHD. So, uh, amphetamines, they also have ADHD activities, but methylphenidate, okay, they are having superior activity in ADHD. So, they, they will be preferred more than your amphetamines in case of ADHD. And they are also used in narcolepsy. What is narcolepsy? Narcolepsy is when you get uh, too much of sleepiness in your drowsiness or feeling of sleepiness in daytime, okay? Um, maybe because you, 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 the patient may be uh, a shift worker. So in those conditions, they will have this effect called as narcolepsy, too much of uh, feeling of sleepiness in daytime, okay? And the dosing of this methylphenidase is usually two times a day. The, so the next drug is atomoxetine. Now, if you remember atomoxetine, you will uh, remember that these drugs are basically marketed, primarily marketed for ADHD. What is ADHD? It is Attention Deficit Hyperkinetic Disorder. Certain children, you, you must have noticed that they are not able to concentrate in their uh, studies or in their da daily activities. They are very attention, they are, defi they are deficient in attention and they will be hyperactive. So, they are hyperkinetic uh, individuals. So, in certain these cases, we will use atomoxetine in uh, such kind of uh, children, right? So, this atomoxetine, basically, they uh, inhibit the noradrenaline reuptake, okay? But important point to note here is they are neither a CNS stimulant nor an antidepressant, okay? So, they are not having these two properties, okay? But they are just used in case of ADHD. Um, the metabolizing enzyme for atomoxetine is CIP2D6, CYP2D6. 
okay now this uh, sick 2d6 they will show polymorphism in uh, many individuals that means some uh, patients uh, some individuals they will be highly the activity of these enzymes will be too much they are they are called as uh, fast metabolizers right and then uh, then we have another uh, class of uh, people who has uh, uh, who, who who show very less activity of this uh, cyp 2 d 6 activity they are called as slow metabolizers so uh, accordingly the response of the drug will vary in the fast and the slow metabolizers now it is in this particular enzyme that is cyp 2 d 6 is inhibited by drugs like fluoxetine peroxetine quinidine right and this will result in increase in the concentration of and toxicity of atomoxetine so uh, your atomoxetine should never be given with fluoxetine peroxetine and quinidine similarly they should not be given with mao inhibitors mao inhibitors are monoamine oxidase inhibitors these are the drugs which will inhibit your enzyme the monoamine oxidase enzyme responsible for degradation of your noradrenaline and uh, unlike um, neurotransmitters right so since they inhibit the noradrenaline re reuptake okay the mao inhibitors also have similar action so if these two drugs are given together there will be increase in the uh, level of your noradrenaline uh, in your in the body uh, which will uh, result in toxic effect right so mao inhibitors fluoxetine peroxetine quinidine these are should not be given with atomoxetine similarly it is also contraindicated in glaucoma this is because there is a risk of mydriasis uh, mydriasis in individuals so glaucoma patient they should not be prescribed atomoxetine then the side effect of this atomoxetines are it, it is hepatotoxic it is very uh, it causes very uh, dangerous hepatitis then uh, it will result in growth retardation in children next drug is pimolin now this pimolin they, they, they have similar activity than, uh, as compared to your methyl phenidate so the toxic effect the actions all are similar to methyl phenidate now pimolin this is discontinued in usa and not available in india this is mainly because of the effect that is they are having slow onset of action and the important side effect is that they cause this hepatotoxicity so this atomoxetine pimolin this both cause hepatotoxicity so a question can be asked okay on this uh, particular side effect then the next drug is modafinil so these are popular with especially with night shift workers those people who have to work in shifts usually they will take these drugs to stay awake right so these drugs they inhibit the noradrenaline and dopamine uptake and, they, and in addition they will also alter the junctional concentration of glutamate and GLABA so they not only inhibit the reuptake of noradrenaline and dopamine but they will also uh, alter the concentration of glutamate and GABA neurotransmitters they uh, one important point to note is they reduce the euphoric which effect produced by cocaine right so this particular drug that is modafinil okay they have been tried for cocaine uh, in case of cocaine withdrawal uh, treatment right still under process uh, still not uh, been marketed for that purpose yet the side effects of modafinil is it causes insomnia confusion amnesia personality disorders tremors and hypertension now uh, another important side effect is they can produce dependence on long term use right so very important to note that they may treat cocaine dependence but they itself may produce a dependence right then we have another uh, drug that is arm uh, r modafinil okay which is nothing but a congener of modafinil having similar activity next is cocaine now this particular drugs we will uh, describe when we are talking about local anesthetic so it won't be discussed here but it is important to note that cocaine is also a cns stimulant next class is caffeine now caffeine it is uh, your methylxanthine derivative just like your theophylline and uh, theobromine right so one important point to note caffeine is not contraindicated in gout okay if you remember your other xanthines they are contraindicated in gout because they produce uric acid however caffeine is an exception it does not uh, convert uh, into uric acid so the gout patients they can take caffeine without any worry right so the use uh, is it is an analgesic uh, it is used in analgesic mixtures right uh, then it is used uh, in case of migraine in case of migraine you will find a uh, formulations which are combination with ergotamine okay now what is the basis for combination with ergotamine is it will enhance the absorption of ergotamine in your git 
right? So they will enhance the absorption of ergotamine from the GIT and they will also benefit, uh, they also benefit by augmenting the constriction of cranial vessels. So caffeine will cause constriction of cranial vessels as well as enhance the absorption of ergotamine from GIT. As a result, they are very effectively used in case of migraine. And thirdly, they can be used in case of apnea in premature infant, in infants as an alternative to theophylline. If any case of apnea in premature baby occurs, normally you will go for theophylline. But if it is not available, then as an alternative, we can definitely use caffeine. So this was a short lecture on um, CNA stimulant and cognition, uh, cognition enhancers. We have seen the first part of the chapter that is CNA stimulants. Our next class will be on cognition enhancers. Friends, please subscribe to our MKJ Pharma Classes channel. Click on the bell button to stay updated and don't forget to like and share the video.